Compact and well thought out design. Easy to operate even for non-techy consumers. Buttons are also very easy to press and suitable for pets of all sizes. But I somehow regretted buying the 12 button getting started kit of Fluent Pet. If you guys want to know why, then please keep on watching. Hi everyone! Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's a Poodle Mom again with the two toy poodles. Today, I will share with you our first week full review of our Fluent Pet buttons. Just so we're clear, this is in no way sponsored, nor are we affiliates of Fluent Pet. This is just really me sharing this with you. So for those who don't know, Fluent Pet is a system of hex styles and recordable sound buttons that help teach your dog how to communicate with you. So I first heard of this whole concept of teaching your dogs how to talk when last year I was browsing through TikTok and I found this talking dog called Bunny. I was so fascinated by their feet and how they were able to teach Bunny how to talk and it was something that I, I wanted to replicate for my girls, not necessarily to be able to speak with them much like how Bunny is, but at the very least be able to teach them. I thought it would be nice if I could be able to teach them the words hurt, ouch, or anything related to them getting sick or hurt so that they'll be able to tell me when there's something wrong. I first heard about Fluent Pet. I don't remember. I think I was browsing through Instagram that time and somebody was posting about it. And then Bunny started using it. And then one day, my friend Bernice, she posted that she bought the tester buttons from Fluent Pet. And I messaged her right away. I'm like, oh my gosh, do you have it already? <laughs> because I wanted to find out how soft the buttons were to press. Because I actually initially bought these buttons. So these are replicas of the learning resource buttons. I also have the learning resource buttons. It's just that I accidentally bought the wrong ones because for learning resources, there are two kinds. One that's recordable and the other one that has pre-recorded stuff. And the one I got were the pre-recorded stuff. But nonetheless, they were very much similar to these. And there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that they were very hard to press for my girls. So they were able to press it, don't get me wrong. While we were able to tolerate them pressing on it, over time, she started getting a wound on her nails. And I assumed it was probably because since the buttons are harder for small dogs to press, they would scratch on it until they finally press it. They don't really just step on it. And then Bernice posted that. I told her, okay, since it hasn't arrived that time, I told her, please, please let me know once they arrive and then let me know how easy the buttons were to press. And then when she said that they're very easy to press, girl, it's um, a small, uh, a light nudge even from their snout can press the button. So it's effortless even for small dogs. So when she said that, I didn't even think twice anymore. I immediately purchased the middle tier set of Fluent Pet. So let's start with the pros. I'm honestly quite satisfied with the quality, especially the design as well as the audio. If we use Fluent Pet. Yes, yes. So what I liked about their design compared to these ones, they're very similar to the learning resource buttons. They have a flip switch here. I don't know if you guys can see it. So you toggle it to the left to start recording because you have to press long and then you'll hear a sound or a beep and then that's when you say the word to actually record and then let go. Bailey. Bailey. The same with this one. But the problem is there's no flip switch. What's nice about this one is there's an on and off button so you can actually save the battery. This one doesn't. But Fluent Pet said that they use batteries that'll last long and we'll see how it goes. And quite frankly, I think even if they run out of batteries, it's very easy and cheap to replace because I'm pretty sure these are the same batteries as the ones that you just use on watches and stuff. So it wouldn't be such a big deal. Whereas these ones, you need AAA batteries. And take note, when you get them, you do not get batteries. So make sure you buy batteries beforehand because you will not be able to operate them without batteries. So my biggest concern is, so with a Fluent Pet, even if, even if the dogs press hard like that nonstop, it will not re-record anything. So with this one, for example, See how there's nothing coming out with a sound? It's because Summer constantly overwrites the words that I put there. So that's the downside to that. If you want to stick with this one, which is half the price. So it's, it's really up to you when it comes to the preference. And notice also how underneath, this one has taller feet or legs. 
whereas this one there's barely anything that elevates it so you guys have to take note that when you put it on the floor it's it gets muffled all the more because the sound doesn't get to spread I don't know there's physics there <laughs> but yeah this one is definitely a lot louder especially even if it's on the floor it's still the same so that's definitely a pro not to mention it's super super easy to press for the girls I have no worries anymore that it could hurt their nails and I love the fact that it's so easy to operate. Like you don't need to be like a genius to be able to figure out how to record the buttons. And even if let's say you don't read the manual, once you click on the Fluent Pet the first time, there's already instructions recorded to it what you're gonna do. And then of course the built-in batteries are super convenient and they provide a very, very comprehensive um, instruction guide how to go about it and even how to set up your tiles so that's a big big pro for me not to mention there is a community that you can join as well even if you don't have the buttons and you're using other buttons they welcome everybody who wants to join the study because i think they're using it as a source of information to pursue the study of how to teach animals to communicate and stuff there are super interesting pets there and it's even categorized i was most shocked with some people teaching birds how to talk like chickens and then there was another one I don't know what breed of bird it is and there are even reptiles so it, it's it's very interesting now let's talk about the cons the number one con for me is definitely the price but to be honest it's not so bad because when I was purchasing these I already found these expensive to think the quality isn't as good but when you buy it in a set it becomes somewhat reasonably priced so I suggest if you're gonna purchase them buy them as a set don't get them per piece it is a bit of a risk too if you buy the set and you're not sure if this is something that you would be investing time in and will be very consistent with it because it is an advanced kind of training it's not that complicated it's not like teaching your dog to walk on a loose leash or teaching them how to be not aggressive it's not like that but it's more mental and somewhat mentally draining as well especially if you don't get results probably I'm like this because I'm getting the results that I want really fast although quite honestly I was expecting maybe three weeks before they start you know forming words I mean forming two word sentences and stuff or even being able to comprehend questions that I ask and them being able to answer. I was super shocked that within a span of a week, I am able to make this much progress with them, which I have been trying to document as best as I can in our TikTok because I didn't want to flood our Instagram with all these buttons because I know that not everybody is interested in this and since our TikTok isn't as active as our IG I thought I could throw all the videos there or maybe even some videos on our YouTube shorts as well as the other Instagram that I have which is the Puro Mom the behind the scenes there because it's something I'm super interested in and at least there no one will judge me and since there aren't followers there <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will judge me for whatever mistakes I make. So I'm gonna post everything, the behind the scenes there of even our failures as well as the successes. So that for those who might actually be interested in it, you'll have like a day-to-day -day basis. It may not apply to your dog, but you'll see how I worked it out. And it may be something that you can use in the future if you want to do it as well. So the next con is, so the whole system is combining the hex styles with the buttons. Honestly, it works. But for me, it's a con because if you would notice, since you will insert it into this, so there's like a dent here. So there's space there, right? And what's under is this non-slip plastic mat. And do note that foam and rubber like this absorbs sound. So from this, what? And when you put it inside the hex style, oops, run, run. do you see the difference? The sound gets muffled and um, it's not as loud. So what I have been doing since I have small dogs anyway, I didn't press it all the way in and lift it a little bit so that run. the sound doesn't get as muffled. 
so yeah that's that's a big con for me but nonetheless it works it works for us and then I'm not sure if this is such a big con but <laughs> for OC people I don't like the stickers because this one I perfectly stuck it here but then see how over time and this is just within a week it would form like air bubbles like that it would lift up from the button and I just hate it I would tolerate it if it will not cause any problem in the future but the problem is my dogs tend to scratch the buttons at times when they get frustrated instead of pressing it that's their way of trying to do it especially if they're in a hurry or they're like overly excited over a treat and stuff so they tend to scratch out the stickers and that's something not nice so i don't know i hope fluent pat will be able to fix the buttons i mean the stickers because it's really nice that they provided stickers for the buttons but for the price you pay for this is not okay <laughs> but otherwise it works and you know for those not oc people they wouldn't really care too much about these things and then another con is i don't know if it's just our floor but for some reason, it's not as non-slip non as I thought it would be. I expected it to be like pretty sturdy, much like, like the yoga mats and stuff. I mean, it helps stop the slipping, but not as much as I thought it would. So yeah, that's something to think about. So I actually regretted getting the 12 button set because I honestly didn't think I would use up the buttons this fast. I didn't take into consideration that I live in a two-story house and it's such a hassle to bring the tiles up and down all the time. So in that sense, it's kind of a hassle. So I should have gotten the 32 button set. But then again, I wouldn't have been willing had I <laughs> been starting because it was quite pricey because there's the price and then there's tax to consider and then there's shipping. Not to mention so it's one expense on top of the other so it's really something that you gotta make sure that you're gonna dedicate yourself to because it would be such a waste of money to just you know purchase them and then you're not gonna use them invest in a camera if you're gonna do this because your your hand and your phone camera will not be as fast as having a camera that's constantly there when they say something because that was my experience <laughs> with summer when she pressed the outside button first well i was i don't know if you guys saw that for those who follow us on instagram i posted a story where summer was pressing the outside button for the first time and that was me in the bathroom doing my business in the morning <laughs> i was pooping overall i think it's a great thing to do with your dogs if it's something you're interested in because for some reason i feel like we're a little bit more connected i know it's something weird for people especially for people who are not as passionate as i am when it comes to the dogs and i'm probably like in the middle tier of like dog craziness for the ones that are high level dog <laughs> who am i kidding but yeah to my parents i'm definitely weird for doing this but it's definitely a new connection that I feel that I have with them because for some reason now, Summer gives me more eye contact and it's as if she's trying to tell me something and I just can't figure it out. So when she gets frustrated, she uses the buttons. So it's, it's an amazing process. It's, it's rewarding, but it's also frustrating and stressful at times. Although I don't have as much stress yet, but it is something that you will surely experience. So just if you're gonna do this just enjoy it don't stress too much give it time if you guys are also on this journey please get connected with us i would love to, come to talk with people who are actually doing this and you know because honestly i'm just winging it as usual <laughs> even if there are guides it's it's different when you're doing it and they also said that every process is different for every dog so you would adjust the processes based on how you think your dog would react fast or how you think they would learn faster and I guess it's a lot easier for me because that's what I already do with my students because I'm a teacher by profession. So it kind of helps. So that's it. For those who are interested in how the Fluent Pet buttons are and whatever is inside in the box, I have an unboxing video which I will link up here and we hope to see you there. Bye!